Greetings friends, Woodman Spirit here. I hope you and your family have had a great summer. Seems like we're getting towards the end of uh, summer weather now today. Up here is uh, 30 centigrade. Beautiful blue skies but it looks like uh, things may take a, a gradual decline over the next uh, three or four days. Anyway, let's just make the best of it and uh, hope you've had some good times out there camping and bushcraft in the summer. Maybe we'll have time for a, another canoe trip tomorrow, I'm not sure about that. But if we do, I'll take the camera along. Okay, I just wanted to update you on uh, some of the, uh, since I haven't been talking axes for a while, I uh, just wanted to update you on uh, some of the restorations I've done already. I'll start with uh, one with quite a story. Now this... Uh, this is mounted on a 36 inch good quality hickory haft. Uh, the story on this is that it was given to me by uh, a young Japanese lady I know called Miss Tomi and uh, this belonged to her father who uh, passed away a few months ago, well almost a year ago now. Uh, and this axe was pretty beaten up. Uh, Mr. Tomey, I think he was 84 or something like that, he, uh, he, he, he burned wood and he, even though he lived in the city, he, he wouldn't convert over to ga natural gas or electricity. Uh, so he used to split all his own firewood up almost until the last few months of his life. And uh, Miss Tomey came to me and asked if I would uh, do a truckload of uh, firewood for a, a dad and he was more than happy to pay me. I kind of said, oh yeah, I'll be happy to give him a load of mixed firewood for free. But unfortunately he came sick and uh, passed on. Anyway, some time later, uh, Miss Tommy said, I'd like you to have my dad's axe, axe because I know uh, you're passionate about axes. So she gave me the axe and when I got it, it was had this haft on it, but it was uh, had one of those classic yellow painted uh, handles here with like a sanded finish on it. And uh, the head was a little bit rusty, it was covered in black paint and, and pine resin and the edge of the blade was pretty well dinged up for, uh, you know, from Mr. Mr. Tommy's years of splitting firewood. Uh, anyway, Long story short, I uh, I thought it may be a good quality axe, but I couldn't see any markings on it. But I uh, sanded it away, and I don't know if you can see on here. Maybe just, hang on. Yeah, just, uh, just there, there is, that's it, there's the Crown GB uh, Granfus Brook, made in Sweden. So it's actually a very nice axe. So I uh, finished the edge by hand and it's pretty sh it's sharp enough to, uh, as most knives are now. Uh, and took off the, the paint and the resin and the dirt off here. Uh, so yes, yeah, a really nice, I'm very privileged to have this. And uh, I said to Miss Tommy, what I'll do is I'll actually uh, pyrograph uh, Mr. Tommy's name on the handle, or his initials at least, uh, as a mark of respect. So that's the uh, three and a half pound Granfus Brooks falling axe. Um, so in terms of, I don't know if I ever discussed this one or showed this one. This again is another Granfus. I paid three dollars for the head uh, in a thrift store. Uh, and it's, I think it's a two and a quarter. Yeah, two and a quarter pound. Uh, it wasn't anything special when I got it, but I spent some time working an edge up on it. And uh, had a, a spare, I think it's a 24 inch haft, shaft, uh, which I paid about 10 bucks for, for $13. Uh, I've got a nice pack axe, 24 inch handle two and a quarter pound cuts pretty well as you can see it's quite a nice profile 
it's not too thin but there again it's not too wedge like either so that's another Granfords this is one that I'm working on uh, my wife wanted a, she wanted a small axe so I had this um, this little Holtbrooks one and a half pound axe head it's in pretty good shape has a decent edge on it I've just polished the edge up a bit um, I thought it would be quite fun to mount it on a, a Granfus Brook small forest axe half so that will be I think it's 20 inches long nice little pack axe okay for chopping kindling or cutting saplings down I guess yeah so uh, again it's on a brand new I mean of course the the shafts are ridiculously expensive but I just thought it's a fun little project so I'll uh, get one just with a name on it This is a nice little hatchet. I'm not using one for buying hatchets, but uh, I think I have maybe three, four at the max. Um, but this is, uh, I haven't got anything made by Sandvik. You can see the logo on there. So I paid three dollars for this at a thrift store. And uh, you can see the stamp very clearly on there. Again, it's uh, Sandvik Sweden, 0.6 kilo, one and a quarter pound. Now this was, uh, this is the original handle on it. Uh, it's got a little crack on here. It'll hold up quite well. Uh, it's not being pounded too badly on the pole. Uh, the head's a little loose, but I can drive that home. And the wedge is actually sticking out, so that's not an issue. Uh, but these look like uh, the hand forged, because they're quite a rough finish on them and the steel is, is uh, hard it's very good quality so for three bucks can't go wrong and uh, the point I'm making here is you don't have to pay a lot of money for a decent axe uh, or hatchet um, I mean, I've, again I found this one in a thrift store I mean it was more rusted than this, I kind of just got a scouring pad and rubbed some of the rust off it but it was very rusty but not pitted too badly. The edge, as you can see it is, uh, yeah the edge is not too bad, that will grind up nicely. Uh, but I thought, I looked at the price label, uh, yeah one dollar. One dollar for a axle. I thought, well, if it's a piece of junk, I can still use it for a door wedge or or something. Uh, but you know, my inclination was it was probably quite a good head. Uh, I'm on a side uh, getting steel wool and a little bit of emery paper on here. You can see. I don't know if you can quite see there. Anyway, it's Seta Banco, which is a, a very good quality Swedish axe. So I think this is probably about two pounds. I don't think it's as heavy as two and a quarter or two and a half. So again, this will probably make a very nice, nice pack axe. Quite like the shape of it as well. It's got the. I haven't seen many Swedish axes with the rounded edges on the pole though. And this one I've had for quite a while. This is a beast of an axe. Uh, made by Barco. I think Barco was originally owned by another company. I'm trying to think who it was now. San I think it was originally Sandvik. But uh, the Swedish anyway. And uh, I like axes with uh, a D-shaped eye on them. And this one, for some reason, had been bent a bit out of shape. The eye was bent so I beat it back into shape or pretty close to the original shape because it was lopsided. Uh, but this I understand is called a, 
uh, Barco Forest, Forester's Axe and it's four pounds in weight and uh, it's got a very clear stamp on it it says 1.8 stroke 4 which is probably 1.8 kilo uh, yeah that'll, that'll equate to four pounds it's got the symbol of a fish on there because the the company apparently came to fame by making uh, high quality fishing hooks so that's why they use a fish on the logo there see yeah so this uh, this will be a beast of an axe when it's done uh, it's fairly thick it'll probably fall but it'll also I imagine split quite well the original paint colour I, I believe it was orange on this well indeed this little Sandvik which is probably made by the same company um, this was covered in orange and gold paint for some reason so those are some projects the most recent one I've got and I'm quite excited about is is this I'm not sure if anybody out there has come across one of these this is 24 inch haft again uh, it's Swedish I'm 90% sure that the haft on this is uh, is birch probably yellow birch because usually with birch you don't see much grain com uh, configuration on it it's quite a smooth whitish kind of wood but it's good for halves so I don't care what other people say I've had no problem with with birch for halves so again an unusual shape what's quite strange about this is it's got a uh, it's got the ear, ears if you wish to call them and such here's a point ground to a point on this side and on this side it's ground to a uh, a radius so not really sure why that is it's probably helps reduce the chance of breaking if someone's levering it out of wood um, anyway it's somewhat looks a bit like a carpenter's axe but it's not uh, profile you can see it too well I'll try and get the light on it quite slim blade so it'll, uh, it'll chop well but it also at the pole it's, uh, it's got quite a heavy pole on it uh, which balances it up very well I'm going to guess this is two and a half pounds in the head but the overall weight is three and a half um, it's it's fitted well but the the wedges shrunk I believe and someone's knocked it in so I'll have to drive the head on a little bit further because I want to keep the handle um, as far as I know this is Colorforce Brooks K-O-L-E-F-O-R-S uh, Brook which means Brook means works in Swedish and it has the three Swedish crowns on it uh, which usually means or, or maybe always means that this uh, was issued to the military so it's as like as not a military axe and as far as I can tell and from what other people have said KB Colorforce Brook 43 means it was made in 1943 now I've never seen an axe which is around this age which is in as good condition as this it's a little bit of dirt on it it's got the original paint on I imagine there's no burring mushrooming on the head uh, and it looks like it's never been sharpened you still got a very slightly convex on the edge there if you can see that yeah so I'm really really excited about this axe it'll probably make a great pack axe uh, but I'm going to hand file the edge which I imagine if it's called a false will be quite hard as well yeah so that's uh, that's quite a find okay that's enough on the uh, axe uh, story today uh, thanks for joining me again after quite a break uh, there'll be another video going up around the same time as this about one of the reasons I've not been uh, putting videos out is that I uh, eventually started work on 
building a house up here. I've been living in a, a trailer and a, with a shack on the back for two and a half years and the novelty of camping is wearing off now so hopefully uh, in the next six months we should be in a house. Okay, best wishes to everybody. Uh, please subscribe. Any questions about axes, please uh, you know, drop drop me a, a comment, and I'll do my best to answer. And uh, I'll see you all again soon. Bye now.